The season of the Phoenix Suns is over. And it's happened in possibly the most poetic way possible. They brought in this veteran, this leader, this one of the greatest players ever. And he's getting ushered out of the playoffs by a rising star. One of the faces of the NBA in the future. So looking at it, I found it quite enjoyable to be honest. Because you have a player on that team who we traded away who people say was it was given a contract that fleeced our team in the washington wizards and bradley emmanuel bill i love bradley bill like in my heart i know i love him right now me and him are going through a rough patch relationship wise and yeah ever since that contract was signed the year before the contract didn't play that well either and it was just like, he's just making my team worse. And then he left the manner in which he left, how abruptly he left, how he said he wanted to go win. So he went to the Phoenix Suns, joined up in a big three with him, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. It left a sour taste in my mouth, the whole thing, holistically. But, man, Michael Winger, Dawkins, they cooked. They really did cook. And Bradley Bill just had a, a, a poor, poor showing in the playoffs this year. There was one game, game three, he had a pretty good game. I think he scored like 26 or 28 points. I don't know. He scored, scored a bunch of points. Uh, but this game here, he scored nine points. I think he shot like full 30% from the field. Uh, six turnovers. Six personal fouls that he fouled out as well. Just a bad, bad overall performance from Bradley Bill. And that, I can't lie to you, fills me with joy. It fills me with great, great happiness. So obviously I'm British. Uh, I've stayed awake to make this video. It is now 7am actually, 7am. The game finished about an hour ago, maybe an hour and a half ago. And I need to record this before I go to work as well. I actually have work. I start work in 2 hours, 15 minutes. So that's fantastic. Uh, but I needed to make this video because the Phoenix Suns, we need to talk about how it's failed. The experiment's failed. The big three has failed. Frank Vogel has failed. They wanted to play without point guard. That didn't work. They wanted to have three predominantly sh sh scorers. They wanted three scorers on their team. Not balance. Not a well-constructed roster. They wanted three scorers on their team. Didn't work. Devin Booker could, could play the point. He isn't a point guard. Bradley Bill could play the point. He isn't a point guard. Kevin Durant can't play the point. So that, that wraps up there. And a lot of the time we've seen Kevin Durant get relegated to shooting in the corner. That's not Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, like, one, like I've said several times, one of the greatest plug-in players ever. You can put him in any system and he will play fantastically. But once you relegate him, he's not going to play as good as he can. But on the other hand, I think one of the biggest failures in GMing history, signing Bradley Bill or trading for Bradley Bill, especially on this contract and expecting to win. You've taken a player who hasn't experienced winning since 2018, really. I mean, even the season we made the playoffs, we lost rest, but we still had a losing record. So you've taken a player that hasn't experienced predominantly winning and you're expecting him to win on a ridiculous contract. Next year, Bradley Bill will earn $50 million. The year after that, Bradley Bill will earn $54 million. The year after that, Bradley Bill will earn $57 million. Bradley Bill has a no trade clause. He can't get traded without his permission. It's truly, truly, truly horrid, detrimental and sad stuff for the Phoenix Suns. And I can't lie, I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for Devin Booker. I think Devin Booker is an All-NBA talent whose talent is being wasted right now being next to two other scorers it's it's questionable stuff to be honest it really really is so uh, moving along we spoke about how bad the phoenix suns are we spoke about how dumb they are to have traded for bradley ball let's talk about the let's talk about the minnesota timberwolves great gming there everyone thought the really good bear experiment was a failure no 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 they just needed one season to pick it up and now you've got mismatch hell in Carl Anthony Towns defensively. A mismatch hell with him playing the power forward. And it's difficult to have a guy that big who can shoot the ball, who can put the ball on the floor, who can also finish inside the paint as well. Can do all three levels. 
but he's seven foot tall and he's a post player. It's it's incredible. It's incredible stuff. Rudy Gobert, obviously one of the best defenders in the NBA, candidate for defensive player of the year. And obviously the future face of the league, Anthony Edwards. There's not enough superlatives for me to talk about how good Anthony Edwards is. Anthony Edwards is one of those players who enjoys the bright lights and there's not many of those players in the NBA right now. We see a lot of players get to the playoffs and the lights are too bright for them. The stage is too high for them. It's too difficult for them to turn it on. Anthony Edwards relishes that moment. He's playing against his idol in Kevin Durant. He's playing on the greatest stage of them all and he's performing better than he has in the regular season. It's great stuff. In that fourth quarter, Anthony Edwards was absolutely fantastic. I think he finished the entire game with 40 points. I can't tell you that for a fact. Literally, the game just finished. I haven't been sat watching, so I don't know. But yeah, in that fourth quarter, he scored 16, I think. He scored two threes. He scored two clutch threes. Bombs. One of them taking him to 110, I remember, uh, when it was a tie game at 107, 107. He's got two blocks in that fourth quarter as well. Shot like above 100% to true shooting percentage. He was absolutely amazing. He even shot a six or seven in that in that fourth quarter. Really efficient, really fantastic stuff to take over the game and show that the league is his. He is one of these faces of the league. He is truly at the forefront of the league. And I'm just truly impressed with what I've seen. And I remember initially I said in his rookie year he should have been rookie of the year over Lamelo, uh, And I didn't have a channel back then so no one could hear my opinion. But I think he, I think he's showing just how good he is. And I think he's showing that he's obviously an All-NBA player this year. I had him in my second team. But Anthony Edwards. Um, Yeah, like I've said, I've run out of words to describe how good he is. So the Minnesota Timberwolves now come up against the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, I believe, if they manage to win. I mean, they, yeah, they will manage to beat the uh, Pelicans. I think it's three zip right now in the series. Uh, I think that's another game where it's 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 going to be a difficult matchup hell for, for Oklahoma City Thunder. They only have one big, they literally only have one big, and that's really, really hard to guard. The Timberwolves, when you only have one big, and that big being Chet Holmgren. Decent perimeter defender, but inside, what's going to happen when Rudy Gobert's inside and Cats on the outside? We're going to see, I guess. But there was another game today, which was the New York Knicks and the Sixers, and there was other games as well. Who really cares, really and truly? <laughs> I'm joking. But, obviously, we want, I want to talk about Jalen Brunson. But Jalen Brunson, you will have to wait till tomorrow. I've got a video for you coming tomorrow because is Jalen Brunson really a 1A player? Becky Hammond didn't think so. I'm starting to be convinced. But that's everything for today. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I will see you, man, in a bit. Boom.